Hello everyone. Uh, we welcome you all for the another session of uh, GL's uh, monthly webinar series. I mean, our topic uh, for this month is uh, centralized all IP mo network monitoring, and uh, we'll be discussing about two of our applications uh, called Packet Scan and uh, Net Surveyor Web. So this month's uh, webinar will be presented by uh, two of my colleagues, uh, Mr. Vijay Kulkarni and uh, Mr. Sanjeev Jigjini. I'll just hand over to uh, Vijay to start the webinar. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Sanjeev. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, I am actually very excited to give this webinar today because our packet scan is one of our one of my favorite products that we've uh, put together. It's uh, uh, you'll see that it's probably very similar to something that you're all familiar with, Wireshark, but it's actually a lot more. Uh, we like to say that it's Wireshark on steroids, uh, so it's sort of a, an in thing that we we call it. But uh, but you'll see that it has a lot of uh, capability for this uh, changing dynamic uh, landscape that is telecommunications. And uh, you'll see that also our Net Surveyor web product is integrated with Packet Scan to make it a very powerful an analysis uh, program. Uh, and it's, uh, it's applicable to this all IP environment that is uh, prevalent uh, these days. And uh, as you know, the landscape for the last, what, 30, 40 years, ever since I graduated um, in the mid-70s, um, has changed so dramatically. Uh, essentially, whatever was wired is now wireless, like that famous, uh, uh, famous people have said, and what was wireless has become wired. Bandwidth has expanded uh, exponentially, and uh, voice is practically free. Data speeds are, uh, are at incredible rates um, from, uh, we were used to call it hundreds to thousands of bits per second. Now we're talking about gigabits per second and hundreds of gigabits per second. So this whole in telecommunications landscape has changed dramatically um, and our packet scan is at the center of all of this change and it allows us uh, allows our company to offer a capability to monitor any kind of converged traffic when I say converged traffic what I mean is that uh, the traffic that is uh, all of the traffic that was disparate uh, back uh, earlier is now converged on to these IP networks and the entire telecommunications uh, landscape is also converging to IP and so we're, we're going to talk about our packet scan product and how it can monitor voice video data and it can process those packets in great depth so that you can see a lot of uh, value uh, as to the traffic that is being uh, carry. Yeah. Uh, basically, GL uh, started uh, operations in uh, 1986, and uh, we have our headquarters uh, in Maryland, Gaithersburg, USA. And we have been uh, into this business since past uh, 30 plus years. And uh, our uh, main uh, uh, area of business is uh, uh, the uh, various telecommunication test and measurement equipments. And uh, we have covered uh, uh, many uh, products into this area, uh, area such as I mean, our expertise uh, is more into protocol simulation and uh, analysis across uh, various networks like TDM, wireless, voice over IP, and every uh, I mean, new, new networks, whatever uh, is available. So we have covered almost all the protocols uh, in these networks. Our uh, strength uh, lies in these uh, uh, telecommunication test and measurement equipments. So apart from uh, uh, products, we have, we also deal with uh, some of the consulting services uh, only in USA. Yeah, uh, you can continue. Uh, okay, we're going to be talking about packet scan and net surveyor web, which is our powerful 
data mining capability that uh, is integrated with packet scan and provides uh, a lot of uh, in-depth analysis and user-friendly remote viewing. So um, uh, we can go to the next slide, and I wanted to show you first what our packet scan and net server web platforms look like. So he, he, here's a uh, uh, picture of those. Okay, packet scan is our software IP analyzer, somewhat similar, as I said earlier, to to Wireshark, but it's quite uh, more advanced. And I think I refer to it as Wireshark on steroids. Uh, so it's all it's our all IP analyzer, and it, it is uh, it analyzes all the IP protocols, these voice, video, uh, data protocols that are um, that are now prevalent in the IP space. And as you know, almost all legacy protocols as well, like for example, uh, CAS uh, channel associated protocols over TDM, ISDN, SS7, and so on, all have now variants in the IP world. Uh, well, all wireless protocols are also based around IP. Uh, so our packet scan is what we call our all IP analyzer, and it can pretty, pretty much analyze every IP protocol out there similar to Wireshark. But one of the distinguishing factors associated with packet scan is its ability to uh, to do more in-depth analysis. For example, it, it has a variety of codecs, uh, which uh, are, could be proprietary or royalty requirements. Uh, it, it does automatic voice and data quality associated with the voice and data that it is monitoring. Uh, in addition, it processes the packets in a intelligent manner. For example, if it was voice, it will actually create call data records. It understands sessions, voice sessions or voice calls uh, or data sessions. So it's able to understand what is, uh, put many, many packets together. For example, it can uh, create a call records uh, associated with a complete voice call. Uh, it's being used in a variety of environments uh, even uh, the FAA is beginning to use that for its uh, conversion uh, migration to the IP IP world. Uh, packet scan can is software only. Uh, it can it, we offer that in two varieties. Uh, one is as software only. That means it can be uh, installed on a notebook PC and it's portable, and it, you can take it for analysis purposes. Um, or it can be centrally located in an appliance, like the, like you see here in the lower left-hand corner, uh, and we call that uh, we we usually situate that in in the network at a strategic location. It can also be deployed in multiple locations, and those the monitoring can be integrated and fed to our net surveyor web, which you see over in the right-hand side, right right lower right corner. There's a version of packet scan that is uh, higher density. And here we're showing you that we can monitor four or eight by one gig uh, ethernet interfaces simultaneously or two by 10 gig or two by 40 gig or uh, several cards with one by 100 gig. So it is available in almost all of the bandwidth uh, available for IP interfaces. Uh, and that's what makes it a very powerful platform for us. And we've uh, sold it in all of these variants. And uh, so here's a here's a, a better look at the higher density uh, packet scan platform. Uh, we're showing you uh, a couple of cards there that we use a special for the higher density. We use special NIC cards that are capable of wire speed capture, and uh, that can happen at both. Uh, a multiple one gig interfaces as well as multiple 10 gig and as you saw in the earlier slide we can also do it at uh, at uh, the 40 gig and the 100 gig speeds uh, it can also be packaged in a portable environment as you see here okay so again here's a, uh, a summary of the packet scan variants so and uh, as you can see even the uh, relatively uh, software only solution packet scan what we call packet scan all IP it can monitor a very large density of traffic 2,000 calls bi-directional RTP traffic and it can be extracting and recording voice simultaneously 
that's quite a number of calls, simultaneous calls. So in most instances, that might be uh, all that you need. And it is a, a relatively low cost product, so it can be deployed in multiple locations and uh, be monitoring IP, all IP traffic. You could have, for example, be monitoring SIGTRAN or SIP traffic or H323 traffic or whatever uh, uh, MGCP, Megaco, all of these variants are available and they could be deployed across various uh, points in the network depending on what protocols you're monitoring. That protocol monitoring can be done non-intrusively, okay, through the use of network taps or mirror ports, and provided centrally to what we were talking about, network and surveyor web, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. But again, the packet scan variants, which can be deployed at multiple locations, uh, the HD version, here you can see that it can monitor a much larger volume of calls, 20,000 calls. We had this deployed at uh, with a lot of uh, airline traffic, for example, we're using this uh, th this type of architecture. Um, and uh, also um, call centers is a typical application where the density of calls may be larger than um, 2,000 simultaneous calls. Although 2,000 calls is, is a pretty large number. Uh, the other variants are, are even higher volumes, and you can see that those, uh, those are there. Uh, at uh, what, what, what's available in terms of the simultaneity. Yeah. So here is the, the broad picture of the telecommunications landscape that we've been talking about. Um, so that, that is the migration of almost all legacy protocols uh, to uh, the IP environment. And we're trying to depict here that packet scan is applicable in a variety of environments. Uh, first of all, it can be deployed in wireless domains and you see that on the right hand side that the packet scan can be uh, it can be installed or on a, in an appliance uh, at an msc or an enode b or um, a node b in, in the wireless infrastructure as you know most of those environments are all ip these days even the uh, 3g has been migrated over to ip so our packet scan has a very nice fit there and it can be monitoring 4G protocols. We're also implementing 5G, uh, almost all the 4G protocols and uh, the 3G protocols and even 2G protocols are mostly now riding over IP. And so all of those protocols can be monitored in the wireless domain. And that, that can be uh, the, the calls, the voice calls or data sessions can be monitored in an intelligent manner and fed over to the bottom central, uh, what we call central database web server, that's our net surveyor web. Uh, on the north, uh, you can see our packet scan can also be deployed in a, a gateway environment where TDM and PSCN traffic may be converted to IP. And this is generally the case, for example, with gateway traffic, uh, where uh, perhaps uh, ISDN or CAS channel associated signaling protocols are converted to SIP or converted to SIGTRAN or uh, MGCP or Megaco. And there, our, again, our IP packet scan is, is a very relevant product and it can be deployed uh, at various locations and be monitoring those. Again, the, the, the uh, value uh, proposition of packet scan is that it analyzes not just individual packet streams, but it consolidates those packets and filters them and puts them together in intelligent uh, uh, methods, like for example, calls, sessions, um, uh, and, and it gives you metrics like voice quality, data quality, throughput, and so on. Uh, these are the uh, features that I think distinguish it from other uh, IP analyzers. Over on the left, uh, we see also that it can be monitoring uh, dedicated IP um, originated traffic, like for example, voice, video, and fax. Uh, these days, fax is uh, it, it handles fax in both its uh, native fashion, which is uh, uh, the uh, RTP MULA ALA, which is maybe transparent, uh, transmitted transparently 
through the network, uh, through coding, but without any conversion, or with conversion with what the protocol that is called T.38. So that both methods are supported in packet scan, and we can do that at very high volumes uh, with uh, the packet scan HD or lower volumes with our regular packet scan. Again, all of this can be fed if a packet scan is uh, used individually, you can integrate Net Surveyor Web with something called Net Surveyor Web Lite at that particular point, and it provides you the remoting capability and user friendliness. Uh, if packet scan is deployed at multiple locations, um, then it can be uh, it can feed those uh, that monitoring activity to that central web server, where it can be monitored through any browser. Um, uh, deployed anywhere in the world. And so many of our customers utilize that capability where we deploy packet scan at multiple locations and a, through a web browser, we can monitor the uh, consolidated traffic. Uh, it can also correlate that traffic. Um, uh, Net Surveyor Web has one other distinguishing factor and that is it not only displays or consolidates intelligently uh, IP traffic, but even legacy traffic, for example, TDM traffic or SS7, uh, ISDN, channel associated protocols. Uh, so NetServeyor Web is also used with our TDM legacy products as well as our IP products. So that's our, our central uh, uh, place where we can monitor through the web uh, what we are doing either in the TDM space or the wireless space or the IP space. Okay, applications. Where have we deployed packet scan and what is it being used for? Okay, as I said earlier, we are using it in um, uh, call centers. Uh, for example, a lot of uh, call centers that are used for transit applications, it's being used in that method where uh, it might be TDM or IP traffic, uh, and uh, you have a, a call center that is basically for um, uh, for, for uh, patrons of that transit uh, facility. Uh, they, people might be calling for uh, help associated with the traffic, or they might be calling about all sorts of other uh, uh, applications that uh, a call center was applied for, and there. Uh, packet scan is, a, is is used as well as our ISDN analyzers as well as SS7 analyzers and so on to monitor the converged traffic that is available at that call center. So that's certainly one of the things. Packet scan can also be used to verify billing and or uh, look at the quality of calls. Um, it can give you an idea of the traffic volume. It's very valuable for traffic engineering. Uh, for example, I'll give you one example that uh, for our transit center, whether if you're using TDM lines, ISDN lines, we have one location where we're monitoring about eight or nine ISDN PRI lines. And uh, usually the uh, it's monitoring continuously 24 hours a day, and it's monitoring, it, it generates, um, the Nessarare web generates reports at midnight and that provides a synopsis of what happened during the day. How much traffic was there? Uh, what type of uh, uh, calls? How many drop calls, success calls? Uh, how the calls were routed and so on. So there's a, a wealth of information about traffic, traffic engineering, sizing of the traffic, sizing of the capacity of the lines that, that uh, packet scan or TDM variants, protocol analyzers, allow you to assess at a central location. Um, so, uh, and of course, one of the most important things is uh, voice quality. Uh, Pakistan is extremely well suited for analyzing voice quality. You may be, know that voice, co voice quality can be assessed in multiple ways. One is intrusively when you can actually send voice as a reference file and, and capture it as a degraded file and do the comparison or you can also monitor the IP traffic uh, as it flows. And knowing what the protocol is, or the codec, 
whether it's new law, A law, or G729, or any other codec variant. We support practically all codecs that are out there, whether they are proprietary or non-proprietary, whether they have royalty or they're not royalty uh, based. So it's uh, it's one of the things that distinguishes packet scan from the uh, from other packet uh, monitoring systems. And of course, as I said, it can monitor not only audio but video and fax calls as well. Um, so those are some of the applications we have been deployed at uh, at uh, transit uh, locations, at call centers, at airline uh, converging points at, for airline traffic, and uh, other uh, for. Uh, okay, we also have it uh, deployed in locations where there are gateways. So at a gateway location, as I had pointed out earlier, uh, we have both TDM traffic and IP traffic. And the gateway provides that uh, um, that uh, uh, tra uh, that transition, right? That, that uh, transfer that from one technology to the other. And many times, the gateway performance is a very crucial part of the actual uh, performance of the system. If the gateway is uh, not uh, is not sized properly or is not uh, uh, performing up to par, then the, uh, the performance of the entire system is affected. So we have applications within Packet Scan and our TDM analyzers. Uh, here we're showing you some, some applications where um, uh, gateways and routers, for example, in the upper application, where we can monitor both the ISDN and the SS7 and the uh, SIP and SIGTRAN uh, uh, conversions simultaneously and you can you can get uh, all sorts of performance metrics uh, of the gateway and uh, on both sides on the TDM side as well as the IP side uh, for example the delay through the gateway the uh, uh, the quality uh, voice quality it may go from mu law a law to for example a compressed codec like g729 uh, and so on so there's a whole the signaling conversion, for example, it may go from ISDN call signaling to SIP call signaling, right? So all of these types of signaling conversions, media conversions, and so on, can be analyzed through the uh, through our packet scan and our TDM protocol analyzers, all deployed at the exact same location. Um, one of the applications that we are currently, uh, our, our product is currently being used for is air traffic monitoring uh, the the entire air traffic control system which is a very um, a complicated precise uh, control of airline traffic uh, mostly it's legacy based uh, currently but it is there's a program to uh, migrate that to all IP and the uh, voice calls for example are going to be riding over IP traffic now one of the reasons that's happening is because the networks that are available now are mostly IP rather than TDM. It costs more to transmit uh, traffic over TDM or maintain traffic over TDM. Uh, TDM equipment is uh, be becoming obsolete, so uh, there's a push to convert everything over to IP in air traffic control as well as uh, other other aspects of uh, um, the uh, air traffic system. Uh, so there we are providing uh, our packet scan is tuned. There are some protocols that are very much similar to the SIP, Session Initiation Protocol, that are uh, tuned for specifically for air traffic control. And there, of particular interest is the uh, very precise push-to-talk, squelch operation of air traffic control that is very uh, very uh, 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 that requires low delay and um, high performance, um, and so that the, the, the SIP initiation the SIP protocol has been tuned for that, and we are our packet scan is able to monitor that as well as emulate that. Okay, so here's an example of some of the protocols. As I said, I don't there I don't know if there's any protocol that we do not support, but Here's a, uh, a quick look at many of the 
protocols that uh, our packet scan does um, uh, support and the, many of the codecs, one of the distinguishing factors, distinguishing elements of our packet scan is the fact that it does support many proprietary as well as standard codecs. Uh, so that's uh, usually the, uh, the proprietary codecs are available at a somewhat, somewhat a small optional price. The protocols on the right hand side are also are all supported. As you can see, it's, it's a mixture of, of both uh, uh, TDM type of traffic that has been converted over to has an analog has an analog over in the IP space. Like for example, SS7 ISDN is the uh, the IP version of that is called SIGTRAN. Uh, uh, GSMA and ABIS, which originally were transmitted over T1E1 lines, are now transmitted over IP, and the, the same terminology is used. Um, similarly for 4G and fax calls and video calls and so on. So this is, uh, just gives you a flavor for the protocols that are supported. Okay, so our packet scan, as are all our packet analyzers or TDM analyzers, have a uniform view, and you might be familiar with this type of view. What distinguishes packet scan from other packet analyzers is its ability to uh, to process uh, packet by packet uh, intelligently. In other words, consolidate packets associated with a higher level structure associated with those packets. For example, in voice, these are called calls, right? Call records, and a call record will have associated with it. Uh, both signaling as well as uh, voice quality and other metrics associated with this higher uh, uh, categorization of the tr of the packet by packet uh, flavor of packets, right? So it consolidates packets into something more meaningful. Uh, it, that could be in the video domain, it could be in the data domain, but it is very easily seen in the voice domain, right? Voice uh, can be seen as sessions. Uh, small sessions uh, among a call in, in, in a longer period call, and that is particularly relevant in air traffic control where you have one call, but you have many, many voice sessions or half duplex voice sessions. Similarly, something like that could also happen in other forms of voice calls or fax sessions or uh, et cetera. So uh, it's packet scan's ability to, to uh, structure these to find the higher layer of uh, uh, of information associated with uh, uh, with calls with with these packet streams, whether it's a video call or a audio call, uh, or the quality of the call, the signaling uh, performance of the call, etc. So it's able to show you this. The main view is this, and we're just showing you some of the view some of the views. I mean, some of them are, are standard type of views that you're maybe familiar with. But if you go to the next slide, it might show you the PDA version of it, where we show you actually call by call. Okay, so uh, you can see that over in the right-hand corner, uh, right-hand uh, area there, packet scan. If you can see my uh, my cursor. We call this our packet scan PDA view. And here, uh, the prior view is the is the packet by packet view. When the packets are consolidated and and categorized in a meaningful way, like as in calls or as part of some signaling sequence, then we call this the PDA view or the packet data analysis. It's categorizing all the packets together in terms of uh, it, the signaling packets, the voice packets, the RTP packets, other control packets that are associated with a particular call. So that's our, and the same can be viewed for fax calls or for radio calls and so on. So uh, what this entire slide is showing you is that there are many ways that uh, that our packet scan uh, can be architected. It can be pure, uh, it can use the, uh, the NIC on the PC, here it's a card, but it doesn't have to be a card, it can be an integrated NIC on a notebook PC. Uh, if you use something like an i7 PC, notebook PC, 
you can probably capture simultaneously at a particular point up to, what, 2,000 calls, 1,500 to 2,000 simultaneous calls. It's more than enough horsepower for um, a conventional portable environment to monitor at any particular point in the network. Uh, but if you if the volume of traffic is much greater, then you might you might elect to go to a, a higher density specialized NIC, where there may be hardware filters that allow you to do wire speed capture. So these are different methods of capturing packets and uh, filtering them and viewing them, and but they all funnel into our packet scan view. This is our point analyzer, what we call our point analyzer, packet scan. But more than this is, uh, and maybe the next slide will show you this, is the ability to take this information, uh, this consolidated information, and send it to our central location, which is what we call our net surveyor web. Now that, it can be co-resident with the actual laptop. In, the, in that case, it's called net surveyor web light. Uh, or it can be at, at a centralized location where we call it net surveyor web regular, uh, for the lack of a better term there. But here are, okay, this is our PDA view again that shows a call by call history for a particular um, call. And again, this particularly is showing you that we can do voice quality, mean opinion score. And uh, these bullets basically tell you the kind of quality metrics that are inherent in our packet scan. Uh, so here we're using PCM ULAW. This is a one call. There, there. If you look at zoom in on this, you can see that there are uh, all sorts of uh, quality ratings associated with that particular call. Here it looks like one side of the call has a poor rating, 2.12, whereas the other opposite side has a higher rating, uh, which could happen, I guess, uh, in an environment where you have perhaps uh, congestion in one direction. So this is our, but this information is, if you go to the next slide, perhaps we'll show you uh, our net surveyor web. Okay, there, again, this is the uh, more detail about active calls. Again, this is our packet scan categorizing packets in an intelligent manner and separating them into signaling packets, voice packets, and so on. And of course, you have all of the capability to investigate in detail the actual message structure and so on. Uh, okay, so in the PDA, the actual packet scan, there are all sorts of performance metrics that are available on uh, on a packet by packet basis or on a session basis or on a small time scale. And uh, things like average uh, jitter buffer, uh, this is a metric that is very, very important for voice quality and uh, is based on something called E-model. And uh, of course, E-model uh, and uh, R-factor. Uh, packets discarded will have a relevance to the voice quality. The greater the discard and the, uh, uh, the higher the compression, uh, the lower the quality. So that in that manner, this voice quality can be inferred using E-model and uh, this R-factor capability, which is built into packet scan. And that's one of the things that uh, make it uh, a superior product, we think, at least. Um, okay, so here we see, again, a very detailed view of, of the session, the voice session, on a packet-by-packet -packet basis. Uh, you can see RTP events. So when RTP is, okay, in, in this particular case, it's showing you that the RTP events uh, are essentially voice events, right? Um, so voice uh, carries with it things like uh, uh, legacy type of uh, uh, signaling tones, like DTMF tones, which still may be used for interactive voice IVR systems or for banking systems and so on to, uh, to get information uh, about uh, your transactions. So uh, you still need to be able to send over an IP network in-band tones, like DTMF tones and MF tones and so on. So the ability of RTP to do that and to be able to detect that 
midstream is one of the things that packet scan allows you to do. <clears throat> and it allows you to look at those uh, the, the TDM streams and uh, uh, and then categorize the, uh, the, the the digits and the if you're familiar with DTMF digits, there are, there are two frequencies, dual tone, multi-frequency, right? Dual tones. Each tone has a certain power associated with it, a certain frequency, and here you can see that. So there's a lot of, uh, I think uh, the, the relevant point here is that within our packet scan, there's a lot of digital signal processing capability um, that is inherent in, in the product itself. And here's another picture of that. So there's um, the wave graph, for example, uh, which is a time domain picture of, what, of, the, of the call. Uh, this can also be typical for a video call as well. Or you could see the spectral display of that particular those packet. So what's happening here is the packets are being put together and being analyzed in some sensible manner, and uh, that is something that uh, what uh, that's something that is a value when you, that is a value at a higher layer, right? Individual packets have to be put together in some meaningful way to construct this type of picture that has some irrelevance about quality and. Uh, voice quality or video quality or or it could be fax quality, for example. You, you could actually have a picture of the fax page here, uh, although we're not showing that here, but it could be a picture of a fax page. So these are all built into the packet scan and that are very powerful. Um, and here are some ways that uh, packet scan is very additional power of packet scan is that it can it can be used uh, to look for specific events um, and only those events uh, because most of the traffic might be normal traffic uh, and it may be uh, uh, may not be relevant to uh, uh, to your analysis if you're looking at an intermittent problem um, you may be interested in uh, searching for those events rather than capturing all of it. Although Pakistan is capable of capturing everything <clears throat> for long periods of time, um, it might be more fruitful to only look for certain events. And those events could be based on certain metrics, like, for example, certain signaling things that happen or packet loss that happens or jitter or so on. And these things can trigger uh, actions, uh, like for example, sending an email or exporting to CSV files and so on. So there's a lot of power, a lot of processing capability within PackScan itself. So here's one of the things that we uh, had, I think, guess I had mentioned earlier about gateway delay measurement. Sanjeev, do you want to talk about gateway delay measurement and explain how this works, perhaps? Here, uh... With respect to gateway uh, delay measurement, uh, like uh, we are going to uh, uh, monitor at uh, uh, the uh, same in the same system, like in the at the two sides, like other one side will be the IP phone and another side will be the analog uh, phone. So in between there will be a gateway, and we are going to tap the analog side using our uh, TDM analyzers like for example for ISDN calls like ISDN protocol analyzers so uh, we are going to tap uh, from that uh, using our ISDN analyzers and with respect to IP we are going to use our IP analyzer uh, which is a packet scan and both these analyzers are going to be there in the same system this is because like we would like to have the uh, same uh, like time uh, we want to have the time uh, with this uh, same time reference so with respect to this we are going to capture the traffic and we are going to feed it to our the, our uh, another application which is uh, going to be the voice band analyzer uh, which is uh, going to uh, detect uh, this uh, difference if there is any delay in the uh, uh, traffic like for example, if you see on the right hand uh, uh, corner, so you can see the delay, like above one is the IP capture 
and uh, the below one is the TDM capture. So here, if you see the difference, there is a delay of 100 millisecond. So with this, we are going to provide the uh, all the uh, important parameters in our net server web applications. Okay, thank you, Sanjeev. Okay, so one of the important characteristics of IP is versus TDM, and this is a, one area where maybe IP has a slight <clears throat> deficit, and that is the introduction of delay, additional delay. As you know, in analog systems, there is very little delay. In TDM systems, there's a little bit of delay. And the reason for that is because uh, voice has to be sampled and digitized and stored and then transmitted. So when you do TDM, although it is a very synchronized, uh, continuous sampling, it still has to be packaged into a frame uh, and sampled and usually there's a little bit of uh, delay in the TDM systems at switches because uh, it's being uh, uh, carried along with other voice calls. And so these, uh, uh, these, uh, uh, these samples have to be multiplexed and the multiplexer delay will be there. Although multiplexer delays are very, very small. Uh, analog systems it generally had very little delay end to end delay. TDM systems introduced a little bit of delay. Now, <clears throat> when you transmit over very large distances, like via satellite or via cable or something like that, um, you might even experience more delay, right? Of course, uh, sending voice over satellite is uh, uh, not a good idea, right? Because of the round trip delay associated with that. And you noticed that on um, uh, TV networks, wherever there is a satellite broadcast, there's always going to be this little bit of delay between the announcer and the person that he's talking to. Uh, that could cause all sorts of little confusion. So now in IP world, the, unfortunately, the IP delay is even worse than TDM because packets have to be uh, formed and uh, a, a bunch of samples have to be consolidated into a packet. So normally this is something on the order of 20 milliseconds. Uh, that's a conventional number that is used quite often in the IP world for voice or for video, it might be a different number. Um, but in any case, it can be as small as 10, but maybe it's usually 20. Uh, now, 20 milliseconds uh, is one packet. <clears throat> if your gateway, uh, uh, stores a couple of packets or more, well now 20 milliseconds has become 40 or 60 milliseconds. So the gateway may introduce up to 60 milliseconds of delay because of the packet storage and relay. Um, now that's at one end. At the other end, there might be another <clears throat> uh, 60 milliseconds of delay. Well, this thing is adding up, right? Uh, so one caller talking to another caller uh, my one-way delay might end up being something on the order of 100 milliseconds. And that person will then respond um, to uh, or acknowledge uh, the, the, the person on the left and say, hi, how are you, et cetera, right? The, the normal conversation flow. Well, once you introduce more and more delay in the conversation, it becomes uh, somewhat awkward if the delay is too large and it can result in what is called double talk. And so you want to avoid that. So the, the, the gateway wants to make sure that it does not store too many packets in one direction or the other direction. Uh, you have to store some packets in the IP to TDM direction because that's something called jitter buffers because of the network itself may route packets differently. So you do have to store some packets just to make sure that out of sequence packets are handled properly. Um, anyway, the net effect is that there is more delay in IP networks. And by packetizing, uh, you can reduce this delay uh, in the backbone of the network by using high speed networks. Like for example, these days, the backbone of the network is, is in the gigabits. So it introduces very little delay. 
uh, it might introduce loss, packet loss, and all sorts of other degradations, but it will introduce very little delay. Uh, but at the endpoints, uh, the gateways will may introduce some delay. <clears throat> and you want to control that end-to-end -end delay as much as possible. So it's important that this metric of gateway delay measurement is important in that sense because it affects drastically the voice quality. And uh, so our packet scan in combination with our TDM protocol analyzers can measure this by uh, using one clock and uh, one uh, um, one PC to capture both directions and synchronize that. And then the, the graphic is just shown is to show you graphically how the actual measurement is, is done, but all of this is automated. And essentially, our packet scan, when in combination with our ISDN or SS7 or CAS analyzer, will automatically give you the delay. And this is one of the nice features um, of our, uh, our integration of our protocol analyzers from IP and TDM. And so you can, in the same, Notebook. Here we're showing you a PC, but it could be a notebook PC, in which case you'd use a, a like a T some T1 hardware to capture TDM traffic, and the NIC on the portable PC would be capturing the IP traffic, and you'd be able to make these measurements on a very portable platform. Okay, so now we're getting to this uh, very important aspect of this thing: is our packet analysis is great. It for it's great for understanding at a particular point uh, what the packet flow is, how good it is, what's the quality, and so on. But it is for a particular point. When you put these pro packet scans at multiple locations and in different environments, you can collect these packets across a wide area network and integrate this in our net surveyor web. That's our central location. That uh, central location could be on that same packet scan uh, on that same TDM analyzer, um, but if, if it's used for point analysis, but if it's used for distributed analysis, then we normally feed all of that information over to a central location. And here we're just showing you the architecture of Net Surveyor Web. Uh, it's a wide area distributed network monitoring system that can monitor both TDM wireless and IP uh, uh, interfaces and consolidate that traffic and correlate that traffic. That's what makes it very powerful. Um, and uh, you can then, as you can see here in this one of these bubbles, that you can access this Net Surveyor web, get all the information that you would get at a particular location where packet scan or a TDM analyzer was deployed, but get it at a at the uh, user-friendly location, where, uh, which is a browser-based web access. So it is browser-based. It's very simple. You can use any web browser and connect it to the Net Surveyor web, wherever it is located. If it was on the same PC as the packet scan, that's fine. If it was uh, centrally located, then you just uh, get internet access into that web browser through password and some authorization. You get uh, access to that. And here is the, the look and feel for the Net Surveyor web. It's a very, uh, it's laid out very much similar to Packet Scan, but it's, uh, the idea is to make it a little bit simpler. Over on the left hand side, you can see, well, this is particularly for, uh, geared towards, uh, some of the applications that we've been using this thing for recently, air to ground calls, ground to ground calls, and and so on. Uh, this is for air traffic control, where they were having a, a air traffic controller to pilot calls or sessions, and we were categorizing those calls, feeding them to a, a central location. And uh, not only does Net Surveyor Web centrally allow you to see the call in its full glory or the sessions in their full glory, but it can also be uh, it can store the voice, actual voice. So here, all these little arrows, et cetera, allow you to, um, you see my cursor, uh, it allows you to expand the view of any one of these calls and uh, actually play the call or see the full signaling 
associated with the call, the quality of the call, the quality of the sessions, uh, uh, pack, you know, all sorts of metrics like loss packets, out of sequence packets, and so on. So the the detailed view that would be available at the local packet scan out in the boondock somewhere uh, is available centrally as long as you had this IP access. Thus makes it a very powerful uh, way of, uh, of analyzing network-wide traffic. And so NetSevere Web has, as I said earlier, it has the same uh, detailed uh, 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 information as Pakistan local. And um, at, at, at the at the uh, remote site, and all of that information is relayed centrally and available centrally, so that you could do a remote analysis of your traffic. And uh, this is a, a depiction of some of that. Here is here we have a session of traffic, a SIP call, a bit, and then you see the ladder diagram. You see the detailed view, the CDR view over on the right hand side. You see calls. Uh, no, you, you see the breakdown of the of, of the call here, with, you know, with uh, all of the uh, signaling packets, and so on. So, uh, and again, uh, I want to emphasize that um, packets are are intelligently processed from in, from individual packets to packets that mean something together, and that could be in, in the voice domain. It's very simple. It's calls in the video domain or in some session domain, it's, um, et cetera. So let's go ahead and play this. Kite flying is such fun. I do it all day. Mr. Smith lives in St. George Street. A 121,040,011 is a large number. 65,000 pounds is a city salary. 0444000. 9123 is a phone number. This is just to show you how how centrally a voice, the actual voice traffic can also be collected. You don't have to necessarily in any particular scenario. You may or may not elect to capture calls. Associated with call recording is all sorts of legal requirements that might must be met before you can record calls, but the capability exists in the uh, in the um, in our uh, tools to allow that to happen. So that's uh, just to show you. Um, one of the nice things uh, about all this information that's being captured, uh, it's nice to have, but you normally, if things are going well, you don't uh, care. Um, all you want to know is uh, maybe a day, daily report or a weekly report uh, about the performance of the system. And if everything is going well, then you just want to know that things are going well, and therefore we it can uh, the Nesterware web can be set up to provide a report to executives uh, with all of the important metrics about volumes of calls and uh, success of calls and bad calls and good calls and so on, or calls by call number, what whatever statistics that might be relevant. To the particular mission that you are interested in can be put together and provided as a report and emailed to the executives at midnight. And this happens regularly with our protocol, with our packet scan net surveyor web combination. And um, this just shows you m many more um, uh, reports that are possible. And usually, generally, uh, the, uh, the customer will have specific types of reports that he's very interested in, and that requires a little bit of conversation and discussion, but uh, the inherent capability is there very easily to provide these types of reports on a daily basis, weekly basis, monthly basis, and so on. In addition, all of this uh, is real time, and um, uh, if something bad were to happen to the network or to the particular uh, uh, trunks or packets or interface, uh, it would give you an almost instantaneous alert. Uh, the alerts can be uh, instantaneous. It can be regular in the form of, uh, of uh, once a day or once a week, once a month type of things. 
but this is a, an example of the type of reports that are possible. Um, of course, the visual alarms, audible alarms are, are, are the type of real time. So. All right, so here is a, remember I, I, I said earlier that NetServeyor Web Lite and NetServeyor Web are two products uh, one is the light, the light version is the one that may reside along with packet scan at, with the packet scan wherever it is deployed. And that might be useful for uh, monitoring at a particular location or on a notebook PC or something like that. Uh, it's for lower volumes. And, uh, but it has the same, same look and feel, same statistics, except the only difference is the volume, volume of traffic that can be accommodated. If you have multiple packet scans deployed in multiple locations, you would be collecting all of that together and sending it to the Net Surveyor web on the left hand side where you can collect larger volumes of traffic and maybe more centrally uh, centrally processed information that would be more relevant uh, from a network wide point of view rather than at a particular location. And that's our presentation for today. Uh, Sanjeev, I'll turn it over to you. Yeah, thank you, Vijay. Thank you, Sanjeev. Uh, we have a customer who is asking uh, one question about uh, ED-137. Regarding the ATC radio communication using uh, ED-137 protocol, is packet mm -hmm. scan able to present or extract or process as an individual call the consecutive packets having PTT equal to on or SQU is equal to on. So there is no SI, uh, SIP call info available as the call is established and never terminated. Yes, that, that is correct. And in fact, that is one of the uh, uh, ideas behind packet scan. And that is it, it wants to uh, take packets and put them together in some intelligent uh, structure. And in the case of air traffic control, the intelligence structure is uh, a PTT on-off type of sequence or squelch on-off. Uh, these are small sessions, I think that's the right terminology, uh, that take place <clears throat> within the context of a call that lasts essentially forever. Um, so these are called, I, I believe they're called sessions within uh, within a, a, a very, uh, enduring call. So uh, yes, our uh, packet scan does, is capable of that as well as uh, our net surveyor web light and net surveyor web regular. Thank you. Uh, I would like to thank all the attendees uh, for attending this webinar. If you have any questions, uh, you can send us a mail on uh, info at gl.com and we'll uh, try to get back to you as early as possible. Thank you once again.